So I guess the only thing left is making sure the line boy doesn't put Jet A in your turbocharged piston aircraft, or making sure he makes the uh, sure the caps are on tight after he gets done filling it up. Right. Well, actually, uh, number one, the misfueling issue is is a problem, not just with airplanes that have the word turbo on their tails, but I have seen that myself personally. I've had to shoo, shoo the. Uh, a fuel truck, the Jet A truck away from a turbocharged airplane that had the word turbo on the side of it in the past. But you, you raise an important point, the fueling process. Many cases of fuel exhaustion occur where the pilot thought fuel had been put on the airplane. But for whatever reason, the, the FBO fuel truck broke down or they didn't have power to the uh, fuel pumps or you know, the fuel order got lost in the in the jumble somewhere. There have been a number of situations where the pilot thought that the fuel had been put on the airplane but it had not and ran out of gas and eventually uh, the investigation showed that, that the fuel had not been added. In many airplanes because of the geometry of wings and fuel tanks, unless the tank is very nearly full, you can't visually check the fuel level. You take the cap off and you see the bottom of the, the tank. So it becomes especially important if you're ordering less than a complete top off of your tanks that the pilot actually be on the scene to observe that the fuel is really put in the airplane. I know of uh, two specific instances where a pilot thought a partial fuel load had been put on board, dialed that number of gallons into a totalizer before taking off, and then had the engine quit, only to find out after they went back to the airplane, after they in both cases got it down on a runway, thank goodness, and found that the amount of fuel remaining on the totalizer was exactly what they had input. In other words, they expected to have 40 gallons added to it. It didn't happen. They put 40 extra on the totalizer and it ran out of gas 40 gallons short of where we thought it should. So it's extremely important to uh, be on scene, not only to make sure that they get the right grade of fuel on board your airplane, but that the fuel order itself has been carried out. Are there any accidents happening these days, or, or in any significant number, that have to do with contaminated fuel, especially as we get a large portion of the piston GA fleet using autogas? Well, it's really hard to tell because, uh, first, uh, if the airplane, if the pilot is successful in getting the airplane down, even uh, on a field somewhere, and the only thing wrong with it was lack of fuel, often that never gets reported. So we don't hear so much about that. The good news is that uh, in, in a lot of cases, those are survivable mishaps with, with no appreciable damage to the airplane. But fuel contamination with uh, alcohol is a problem. Uh, there is significant evidence that alcohol content in automotive fuel does over time deteriorate, deteriorate uh, components of the fuel system of airplanes. So that's something to be solved if, if we have to move more and more towards an automotive gasoline fueled fleet. Uh, the biggest contamination problem continues to be uh, water that isn't sumped out of tanks. Pilots sometimes can get lax about sumping tanks. Uh, it takes water approximately 15 minutes to precipitate out of one inch of aviation gasoline. So if you have a tank like we have in a Bonanza that is a four inch deep bladder, you put fuel in and if the last bit is a big slug of water, it won't be down in the sump drains until at least an hour after the fueling happened. And the, it, it's, it's easy to top off, jump in and go. So uh, I recommend that if you're going to uh, make a fuel stop somewhere, that you have the fuel added right away, then you go talk to flight service or get back on the computer to update your weather plan and your flight plans, and you go do everything else after the fueling's been done, then come back out to the airplane and check the sumps before you go. Uh, lastly, you mentioned it earlier, uh, we continue to have issues with uh, misfueling of airplanes with uh, turbine fuel in a piston-powered airplane, and that is almost immediately catastrophic to a piston engine. Well, Tom, we'll take these things to heart. I hope the day comes very soon uh, when we're both still young enough to have these discussions when you won't have anything left to write about in your newsletter. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate it. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, 
With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com.